This is video number four for sections 4.3 and 4.4, .4, solving power equations. Uh, this video covers an algebra skill that we're going to need to use in the next lesson. Uh, the next lesson is going to talk about finding those equations again of exponential functions, except we're going to deal with harder situations when the A and the B aren't quite so obvious as they were in that last video. Uh, in any case, we're going to need this skill solving power equations. A power equation, uh, here's an example of one right here, it just means an equation that has a numerical power in it. Uh, this one has this 5 here. The base is the unknown, so the x is in the base position, but we've got this numerical power. Well, uh, solving an equation just means trying to get that x by itself. I do that using typical algebra steps. Uh, let's see, obviously the first thing I would want to do is add 1 to both sides to get rid of that. And then the next simple algebra step would be to divide both sides by 3. Since 3 doesn't go into 10 evenly, I'll just keep that 10 thirds. Uh, we don't want to go to any kind of decimal until the very, very end. Well, that was kind of the, the easy part. That x is almost by itself. I mean, the only reason now it's not by itself is that fifth power. And so I'm left now trying to figure out, well, how do I reverse a fifth power? Like subtraction, the reverse is adding. Multiplying, the reverse is dividing. How do I reverse a power? Well, this is where those rules of exponents come in. The answer is the following. I am going to take each side to a particular power. What power? Well, it turns out that what works is to use the reciprocal of the power that's already there. I'm going to take each side to the reciprocal power, namely one-fifth. Why does that work? Well, because we had that rule of exponents that said if you have a base and then two powers, the base stays the same, and you multiply the powers. 5 times 1 fifth is 1. And x to the 1 is just x. It's by itself. So it works. My final exact answer to this problem is x equals 10 thirds raised to the 1 fifth power. Now that's kind of a mess, so most of the time they're going to want you to finish this off by typing it into your calculator and getting an approximate solution. You just have to be very careful when you do that. It's all about using parentheses correctly. Uh, in order for the calculator to understand that that 10 thirds is all part of my base, I need to make sure I put it in parentheses. Then I'm raising that to the one-fifth power. Now on this particular model, I get a nice little exponent slot, right? So I can just type 1 divided by 5 into that slot, and I'm all set. On some of your calculators, you don't get the nice little exponent slot. And if you don't, then the one-fifth also needs to be in parentheses. Okay? Make sure you test it out, and you can get this answer. This problem didn't tell us how many digits to round off to. Uh, the computer will certainly make that clear. Uh, so I just rounded it off to three places. The approximate solution to this problem would be about 1.272. As I mentioned before, don't do any rounding whatsoever. Don't go to decimals at all until the very, very ending of the problem. Otherwise, you'll be slightly off in your final answer. Well, let's go ahead and try one more example here. It's very similar. There's just one uh, slightly different twist to it. Uh, I'm sure when you glance at it, it looks uh, considerably more complicated. It's really not that bad, though. What you need to realize on the left is one of those rules of exponents applies. Remember there was that one about dividing two guys with the same base? What happens? The base ends up on the top. In other words, there is no uh, fraction anymore. And the, the new exponent is simply the subtraction problem, top minus bottom. 7 minus 4 gives me 3. So that left side is really just x to the third. 
the right side, uh, I can't simplify 17 halves any, so I'll just leave it alone. In terms of algebra steps now to finish this guy off, uh, I'm really just right at the very end. The only reason the x isn't by itself is that third power, so I will just need to raise each side to the reciprocal power, in other words, the one-third power. Uh, on a test, if I were to say, show your algebraic work clearly, this is what I'm talking about. You demonstrating uh, your understanding of raising each side to the reciprocal power. Well, we're all finished. x is now by itself. The final exact answer would be 17 halves to the one-third power. Uh, if we wanted a decimal approximation, we would just go to the calculator. And remember, when you type it in, that 17 halves needs to be in a parentheses, and depending on the type of calculator you have, that one-third may also need to be in parentheses if the calculator doesn't give you the nice little exponent box. Okay, Go ahead and do that, see what you get. I got about 2.041 rounded off to three places as the final approximate solution to this equation. Make sure that you practice this skill because we will need to use it in the next lesson.